7.22 in Trinidad and Tobago, Shashamani Sunrise is a registered non-profit volunteer organization whose mission is to help create healthy learning environments where children have access to educational resources and mentorship that they need to achieve their academic goals. Uh, they are committed to providing adequate educational resources to low-income students in Africa and the Caribbean region. Here to tell us more uh, about the organization is the chairman of Shashamani Sunrise, Professor Rene Williamson, and also with him is Janicia Brathwit, who is a member of uh, the Trinidad and Tobago arm, uh, Shashamani TNT. Uh, good morning, good to have you on the program. Good, good morning, Fazir. Glad morning. to be back in Trinidad um, to talk about some of the work that we're doing here. And thanks for the T-shirt. You know, as, as I always say, we, we in the media, we love to get gifts. <laughs> And, uh, and, and it's a lovely bright red. Well, say, well, we visited with you last year. Exactly. So, um, well, the last time you related. visited me, I, I ended up somewhere else. So uh, I'm I waiting understand. to see after this, after this interview if I'll end up anywhere else. But for those who might not be aware of your organization, again, update us on Shashamane. What is it all about? So we're really an educational nonprofit. What we try to do is to provide support for schools and students in rural and inner city com communities all across the world. We're in six countries. Um, three in, in Eastern Africa, Kenya, Uganda, and Ethiopia. And in Caribbean, we're in Trinidad, um, Jamaica, and Haiti. And so we developed a concept called a model school in Shashamani, USA. And we said, what are the inputs required for a school to be very successful and deliver on its mission to make sure that we're training young people to become productive members of the community? And we said, the inputs include things like cl school and classroom supplies, teaching, ICD facilities, and so forth. And we're committed to make sure that all the schools that we support have all those components. Is this done in concert with the local educational ministries? The reason I ask that is that a couple of months ago, we had some, some representatives of an organization mm -hmm. that claimed to be doing a lot of good educational work and had no approval from the Ministry of Education, mm -hmm. and that created a, a rather embarrassing situation. How does it work with Shashamani? So it, it depends on the country we're working. So different countries have different um, rules. So usually we will be contacting a liaison in the school, and they will tell us what the kinds of rules they have. So for example, the first school we started with in Ethiopia, it was actually an NGO. So all of their support came from philanthropic organizations like Shashamani or individual donations. In, in places like Trinidad and Jamaica, and to an extent in, in um, Uganda, then there's also ministry and also government-sponsored schools, so you have to work with the, with the um, officials um, at the school. Jan Janice brother, tell us a bit about the Trinidad and Tobago situation. Uh, how, how is it working uh, right now? How many schools are you assisting? How, how long has the project been going on? Okay, well, Shashamani has started in Trinidad uh, last year. It was my first year being a volunteer at Shashamani. And, um, Right about now, we're still in the de developmental um, phase. So we're still trying to get together the officers for the board, all these different people, and all volunteers. So we work with five schools right now in Trinidad. Um, no, four schools. Four and schools. And one school um, in Tobago, the yes. Roxborough Secondary School. And um, basically, well, that's it. And what? this year also, we invited mm -hmm. some of the, the children's home. Because mm -hmm. one of our, the, the projects we do are from Shashamani USA in Trinidad. So it's kind of Shashamani USA who, who governs different countries, but in Trinidad I'm thinking that you'll govern the regions and the different parts of the country. Um, we work with also some, some children's homes. We invited them to camp this year. We found mm -hmm. it to be very useful because some of the children's homes and some of the kids in the inner city communities have the very same needs in terms of the aspirational goals that the kids in the rural and inner city communities um, I mean, rural communities have as well. So, so essentially, uh, Shashamani is about providing the tools uh, for, education for education because because some people might be argue uh, will be asking the question, uh, what is the orientation mm -hmm. of Shashamani? Is mm -hmm. it is it a, a, about uh, reaching out to to, to Afrocentric or, or, or those uh, whatever whatever race whatever ethnicity? Uh, is it is it some some sort of philosophy that you you're trying to teach? Not not that there's anything negative mm -hmm. about yeah. it, but is there a particular idea behind no. it? It's, it's it's really a secular mission, and, and people all over the world, all walks of life, can relate to this. We have a young woman who was a teacher at one of the schools in Fishing Pond. She donated from her own pockets to cover the cost of one, um, one, of their, their, um, one day for their students to move from Fishing Pond to, to UTT where we had the camp. Mm. This is a, teachers are not very well paid um, anywhere in the world, but That's certainly true. not here in mm -hmm. Trinidad. Yeah. We have people at the very other end of the spectrum um, and we also have corporate um, citizens who sometimes come on board and help in the way they can. The point is that everyone believes and understands that when kids don't have opportunity, they're going to be left behind and then they're going to be subject to some of the negative influences that are really 
in the news today, right? Yeah, absolutely, especially with the state of emergency <laughs> exactly. that is going on. So this is part of the solution, <laughs> I think. Mm -hmm. Make sure these kids have opportunity. If they have uh, other options and they know, for example, that economics of getting involved in certain types of activities is not even worth it to them. It's better off working at McDonald's. That's what um, Stephen Dubner, the professor at um, University of Chicago said. He made an economic argument. He said, the economics of being involved in narcotics trade is really not worth it for a person at a low level. You're actually working more hours, in effect, and get earning approximately the same as working at McDonald's, the equivalent of KFC in Trinidad. Yes. One of the fast yeah. food restaurants yeah. or something like that. So we need to be making that case to the young people, but we also need to be giving them other opportunities, telling them that they can be the next Leroy Clark, be the next Claudia Pigos, be the next Brian Lara, and so forth. This is why we started this Mentors and Icons project. So we have people who are leaders in their field, really excellent people. For everyone from Leroy Clark, who I talked about, he's 72 years old. Yes. He says, I'm, I consider myself to be a two-year-old because I'm, I did my three scores and 10, and now I'm two again. Yeah. So <coughs> out to someone like Leanne Forbes, who's Miss Trinidad and Tobago um, World. She's mm -hmm. about to go represent your, your country um, in, in, the, in the world. Miss um, World. Miss World yeah. um, pageant. They've been able to tell their story of genesis, how they got started, where are you from? Where in Trinidad are you from? And some of these communities are actually the same communities that these young people that we're talking about are from. Leroy is from um, oh. Gonzales, yes. which is near Belmont, which yes. is one of the schools that we support, Belmont Primary. Yeah. Shay Lovelace, who did the, the PSA for us, he's from Matura. Mm. His family's from Matura, which is near Salibia and Fishing Pond, where two of the schools that we work with. Um, Claudia Pigos is from Palaseco, which is in southern Trinidad. So yeah. these are the things that the kids can really relate to. I can come in as a foreigner and tell you, hey, you can be whatever you want to be, but how does it... How do you see Connect, and visualize and, and translate the path? Um, and so we do provide the tools, but we also provide some of the mentorship and, and, and guidelines. We work in, in concert with others. So last year we worked with Calabash Consortium, who mm -hmm. helps kids in traversing the different types of careers and different types of... Janice brother, for those who would like to get involved, who would be like you probably inspired to get involved uh, from, from a Trinidad and Tobago perspective? Mm -hmm. how, do, how do they, they make contact? How do they, they get involved? Okay, well, firstly, well, you can log on to the website, www.sashamanisunrise.org. There you find all the information about the group and how you can join or register to be a volunteer. Also, I wouldn't mind giving my personal information to the public sure. so that they can contact me and find out more if, they, if necessary. Um, and also through the events that we have in Trinidad right now, um, we always leave contact. You can come to them. A lot of some of them will be free for, to the public. So you can always come just to show your support and get information on the group. And also, if you, if you want to be a volunteer, that's, uh, that's free to do as well. And, and one of the, the events that you all are involved in right now is the book drive. Right. T tell us a bit about that. Okay, well, the book drive was Shashamani Sunrise is partnering with RIK, where any member of the public can visit any branch of RIK. There are about eight branches in Trinidad and purchase a book or any educational tool, but whether it be a book, pencil, pens, um, school bags, lunch bags, anything like that, uh, in the name of Shashamani. And we will, um, RIK will collect them and uh, we will deliver them to the, the schools on our school tour. The duration for this program is um, at the end of September mm -hmm. because our school tour starts at um, October. So you wanted to get all the um, items collected from each branch of so the So it's going on right now? Yes, yeah. it's, it's and going we'll on. until the end of September? Right. Yes, it's going on right now. Um, the different RIK locations you have at West Mall, Queen Street, Port of Spain, Long Circular Mall, Trent City, Gulf City, um, High Street, San Fernando, Price Plaza, Shagonas, and also Grand Bazaar. And um, the contact information is 478-7574. Um, 478-7574. But for yes. there, just to say a little yeah, bit, sure. it tells us a little bit about how, how we, we work at Shashamani. It's really a grassroots effort because I know that everyone in Trinidad can go to a branch of RIK bookstore and buy a pen or a pencil. Mm -hmm. The guy in Ethiopia that helped us start this program, um, Leroy calls him our little spirit or angel, he asked us for a pen or a pencil. Now think about that request when we were in Ethiopia and everyone was asking us for money and stuff. We had to go into the big Bob Marley concert at yeah. the time in 2005. Yeah. So that, that really caught our interest. And I was an academic, so I wanted to know why he wanted a pen or a pencil. It turns out he wanted it is a tool of education for him. Exactly. That is how he's going to change his life circumstance from being in rural Ethiopia, agrarian community, 
to becoming something who's someone who's productive in their society. So a pen or a pencil, it costs what two dollars in Trinidad? Yes, yeah, so or even less. Two, yeah. one or two dollars in Trinidad yeah. for a pen or a pencil, and you can play a part. I believe that everyone can play a part. You come to us with your different skills or expertise, like Janice was talking about, our volunteers, and whatever it is you do, do that and help us to provide opportunity for those kids. Well, let me ask you the obvious question that the cynics might be asking. Um, can you vouch for the integrity of the organization? Because some will say, are we, are we putting ourselves in a situation where you're going to hear 10, 12 years down the road or next year that Professor Rene Williamson has been selling school supplies uh, in <laughs> well, for, at, at exorbitant prices? And, and you know what's funny? Because this was an experience we had when we first started working in, in Africa. Because we had donated a bunch of school supplies because you know, we got excited by this mission. It turns out that they, they weren't in the next to go to the, the kids that we intended them to go to. So what we do is we have people on the ground. We have three levels of, of um, checks and balance. There's someone in Shashamani, USA, is on the board who's responsible for our country. There's someone in, in the country who's not affiliated with the school who's like a, or a liaison. And there's someone in the school. So between those three persons where the checks and balances, we will make sure that whatever we say we do is done. So every dollar someone donates on a, through our website, shashamanisunrise.org, goes directly to a school or a school project, right? And then people will also donate books and pens and pencils directly. So you don't have to send us money. Donate a piece to your laptop that your, 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 compu your company is no longer using. We will deliver it for you. We will take pictures and verify it. You can go on our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash Shashamani Sunrise. Or YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Shashamani Sunrise. Yep. Any of those things, you can you see the Skype verification. Shashamani Sunrise. Skype yeah. is also <laughs> yeah. um, one of our, our communication tools because we're in Africa and all over the world. So um, I, People say I'm always up at 2 a.m. in the morning because it's 7 <laughs> o'clock in London and it's nine o'clock in Ethiopia. So, um, and when I get up and I walk sometimes on, on the hill, at four o'clock I'm still on my phone talking or, or, or communicating with Do you get support from the corporate communities in the various countries that you work? Sometimes we do. Um, I guess we're a grassroots movement, so it's a lot of individual support. But <coughs> some people come on board and help us. So I, I actually was gonna mention a few of those. So yes. places like venue sponsors. We have places like Playa del Este. So when we had a retreat to g get organized in, in Trinidad, they came aboard and helped us. The place like the Hyatt, when we had a benefit, yeah. they came aboard and helped us. Cascadia Hotel, they gave us some accommodation. Different people with different types of expertise come on board with those things that they do well. They said, we can't support you financially, which is fine, but we can help you with the tools that you need to carry out the mission of making sure that these kids have opportunity. The food sponsors, places like Jerpot, they would give food for one day to cover the, the, the kids um, and the volunteer supplies in camp. Oh. Um, Another food sponsor in, 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 in Sagrat Sangre Grande, um, J.E. De Freitas. Yes. They also um, sponsor school for. So this is how people help. The point is that we don't need people to give us a, a check for $100,000 yeah. or something like that. It can be in what kind. It, it doesn't have to be. It, it can be, be kind and yeah. it can be small. Mm. So what, what do you say to, to, to those who might again be saying, look, the problems are so deep and wide when it comes to education and, and children with lack of opportunities here in the Caribbean and East Africa and in other parts of the world, that this is just a drop in the bucket. It's a drop, but this is what we can do. I believe that in Trinidad we can touch 850 kids because those are the number of kids that are in the four schools that we're supporting right now. But I'm prepared to go around the Trinidad on every news station, every television station, every, every newspaper, print magazine to tell the story of these kids. And if you go on our website, it's um, shashamanisunrise.org or you go on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash shashamanisunrise. You will be able to see the story of some of these kids. Mm -hmm. it, it talks about two of the twins from Fishing Pond School. They walk five kilometers every day to go to school. It's about an hour. Mm. But they go to school every day because they believe that this is the way they're going to improve their life circumstances. I can't be but energized to work on behalf of these kids. I talk about the kids in Uganda all the time. There are 503 kids in a school called Ngora Okaboy. They go to school every day, and the roof is about to fall on, on them any time when we first visited the school but they believe that this is the way they're going to improve their life circumstances. So they take the classes under the tree. But if it rains, they have to go inside. And then they're still going to have the tree, the roof calling down on them. So it's a catch-22. They can't win. Yeah. So we got to work on behalf of them. Yeah, we raised exactly. about $7,000, and we started building a roof. So now two of the classrooms are roofed, and we're working on it. We continue to work on it. We're trying to get support for those kids, kids like the ones in Fishing Pond, kids like the ones in Jamaica, kids like the ones in Haiti. In Haiti, what passes for a school is four poles and a canvas. 
that's it. Yeah, they're certainly doing very good we work, can, work Professor we can try and help. Good to have, and uh, good to have you on, Ms. Exactly. Bradford, as well. Good to, you. that you're on board. Uh, this organization which certainly is doing a tremendous amount of work. Uh, and as I say, they stand up to scrutiny. So uh, they, they'll be more than happy to, to get your questions. And you can contact them in the various uh, formats and various platforms and also at 478 7574. Very Let me quickly. Just make a quick mention about the school tour. Because sure. what we're able to do in that very is, quickly, is quickly. bring our workshops on the road to the schools. And we have many members of entertainment. Grams and Peter Morgan from Morgan Heritage will come and join us. Yeah. Um, Wendell Man Warren from the Three Canal Band. Yeah. And some of the other um, local entertainers here in Trinidad are going to come and provide a little bit of entertainment flair in addition to the hard work of telling kids, work hard, have good mentors, and dream dream big, dream big dreams is what we say and contact all the various uh, websites and so on to get more information before i get in trouble for the segment running on too long we have to go to a break we'll be right back mm -hmm.